And that's how we do it. Uh, well, you can stop. You, you no. What we are going to do is that uh, we looked at the probability triple, probability space, and the probability axioms, the concept of conditional probability, and the concept of independence or dependence between events and so on. Okay. Then, uh, before we migrate to a better abstraction called as the random variable, we will look at how these probabilities can be evaluated okay, under certain broad uh, scenarios which are very frequently known. That is, you have a sample space. Omega, which has got a number of sample points. Sometimes this kind of a psi is being used to know different sample points. Or we have also used this omega i for representing the sample points. It may so happen that in many experiments, the sample points are also observable. Okay? It is not just a big, but in general, events are the ones which are of interest to us and observable. But it may so happen that sample points are also observable. For example, if you uh, throw a die, then the phase that come up is what we call the sample point. They are observable, they themselves are even, and you can construct an even phase also. And in many such random experiments, each of these possible elementary outcomes, I will call it as the elementary, not just outcomes, because if this is the unit of outcome that you can uh, view it like that, that can occur. If one outcome occurs, other outcome cannot occur. That kind of atomic outcomes, or that is why they are called as the elementary outcomes, or what we call are calling as the sample points. <laughs> Only one such sample point can occur, but it may fall in an event in which case we honor more events, in which case we tell that those events have occurred. And the nature of the random variable is such that all these elementary outcomes are equiprobable, are equally likely to occur. Okay. So this is what we are going to take as all are equally That is, if you toss a coin, if you wear a fire coin, both uh, outcomes, head and tail, are equally likely to occur. If you draw a card from a deck of cards, any given uh, card can easily likely to be uh, equally likely to be drawn and so on. This also happens in many physical situations. For example, in statistical mechanics, if we have a system being defined by certain uh, macroscopic variables, Okay, volume, pressure, temperature, and so on. There can be different microscopic states that may correspond to this, that may be consistent with this macroscopic state. Okay, if the total energy is E, the sum of all the energy of individual entities should add up to this E, and so on. And the volumes are restricted by the length, breadth, and so on. So there are certain restrictions that the uh, macroscopic variable put. Many microstates can be realized adhering to the same macrostate. And the basic tenet of the statistical mechanics is all such microstates are equally likely to occur. And that is why uh, I don't want to, I'm not an expert also, I don't want to get too don't much, but that it is how we often define end up as the maximum, the number of microstates which are realizable for a given macrostate. That defines that and the, all this micro canonical ensemble theory, canonical ensemble, all these starts off with that. So this uh, idea of equally likely uh, elementary outcomes is not just an artificial one, it is very basic in our uh, natural uh, uh, phenomena. But in that case, what we know is if there are n possible 
uh, sample points, the probability of each such sample point is 1 by n. Okay, and probability that an event occurs is the p into the number of sample points present in this event. Present in the event because event is a set basically. Okay, so the probability of different events can be computed by just counting the number of sample points. For all such problem, the, the uh, problem of computing probability boils down to counting the number of uh, outcomes, elementary outcomes that will lead to that sample point. And if you know the total number of sample points in the sample space, probability can be found. So this is where counting is very important. And the field of mathematics where basically we count the number of ways in which certain uh, outcomes can occur is combinatorial. So we will just try to uh, recollect some of the basic principles of combinatorial. So that can, we can make use of it for solving many of the counting problems. The first basic idea is that, let us say we have a set of n non-identical entities. So we have a set that has got some elements or entities okay, which are not identical, which are distinguishable. That's important. If they are identical, then it will become different. If you try to choose it, after choosing, you cannot tell which one. They are all identical, okay? non-identical entities. And uh, you can, to make, because it is non-identical, I can just represent it as square, circle, and uh, something like that. Just tell that they are just non-identical. What you are interested in, we are interested in drawing some uh, elements or entities out of and form a set. We are interested in drawing, let us say, k, k being less than n entities and form a subset with k elements. So, So here, if you number it, you will have n such entities in the original set. You are going to draw a subset. This is only for our purpose. This number is only for our purpose. Right? Uh, uh, a subset of k. We can call it as drawing entities of the set or sample. But every time we draw, it's like there are it's just you take one sample and then put it in your subset. Okay. Maybe something like this. It may be Well, now the whole idea is, basic idea is how many ways in which this can be done. That is what we are interested in because our even corresponds to picking up or drawing or sampling k entities from a set of n entities. This is how we can pose most of the problem. That is why we are interested in this. When we tell that this one, before we, we can talk about how many ways in which it can be done, we have to be much more specific in telling what is there any specific rules in drawing or sampling items because this is very big of just telling that I want to sample and so What I can do is, I can take one item, okay, and then for example, uh, it is a deck of cards, okay. I can take one item, look at it, note it down and put it back. Because my idea is to take this one. Other way is I can take it and keep it separately so that it forms a 
smaller set, when you distribute cards to a different player, then it is being given away. The set, set is formed. Once it is being taken, okay, it is gone from the original set, I cannot delete it. Okay, so this we have to be very specific about that. In the first case, where you just take it, note it and keep it back, because you are only interested in in how many ways you are doing it, you are only noting it down. So you are replacing it. In the next one, where you don't replace it, is the other way. So there are two ways basically in this case of sampling. without replacing. The next way in which you can do is, well, you draw this, uh, you do this process of sampling in an orderly manner. You first draw, it is not that you just put your hands and then pick something, not like that. Okay? You just pick one by one, in one order. And the first element that is being picked is put in one place and you remember where it is and the second element is placed next to it and so on in a way that you know later on what was picked first time, what was picked and it took the time on to know and so on. Or you arrange it so that you know you arrange it in an ordered manner. So, so that you know when you arrange it you also know which was picked at which time and so on. So, if you either remember the order or you arrange it, it's all both in the same. That is one way of doing it. Okay? So where it is an order sampling of elements from this one. The order in which they are being sampled is important. All the items that are arranged, how it is being arranged, it is important. So that is one way. That is called as order sampling. The other way is, okay, you pick it and you all put it in one set in such a way that you don't remember the order. You don't care about it. That's more correct. You don't care about it, the order in which it is being picked and you don't have adhere to any arrangement in this also. That is called as the unordered term. So, once we tell uh, this process or sampling k entities from a set of n entities, we should also specify which way we are doing the sampling. There are four possible ways. With replacement, ordered sampling. With replacement, unordered sampling. Without replacement, ordered sampling. Without replacement, ordered sampling. Or possible four combinations. So we have to be very specific in that. Then because the results may be. We will take an example of what, why this occurs and so on. For example, um, we want to find a uh, number of uh, four lettered words in English. With or without me, I am not going to tell that, but such that the letters are given, the characters drawn are given. Okay, so you have got the alphabet, set of alphabet, which has got 26 characters. So you have to draw four of them, yeah? such that the characters don't repeat. So, this is a case that uh, there is no, uh, you don't replace, okay, without replacement. So, and actually you can find it out what it is. Actually, the number of ways is 26, 25, 24, 25. Like that. This is the case of that, that kind of The other way is you want to form, yeah, let us say, uh, 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 
registration, you want to form a registration plate or number for a vehicle. At every vehicle, car or scooter for that matter, has got some tool bird alphabet in India followed by four letters, four uh, numbers. Okay? So that we will count the data in numbers. So you want to draw a, a four digit number. And use it for some identification purpose. So, 0 to 9. And here in this case, you don't mind the same number being repeated. It's all valid. So, there are 0 to 9 one. So, the first one, second, third, fourth, there can be 10 possibilities, 10 possibilities, 10 possibilities, 10 possibilities. In which case, you also allow 0 to be present. Sometimes you say that that is not what I want this becomes 9. So in this case, the same number can be picked again and again. It is as if it is with request. So this is another uh, example where we may go in for uh, uh, with request. Let's take we have got a team, okay, uh, uh, we want uh, an academy is there. They want to uh, take 11 members, players, form a team and set it for some match and so on. So here what happens here is, or there are let us say 15 players in that academy, they have to pick 11. So here you have to do, you pick one person and then put it in that uh, team. The same person cannot be picked. Okay? And he may be he may first, first pick a goal, goalkeeper, then a centre forward and so on. One person cannot act in two possible positions. They are all without replacement. So you may tell that okay, it is number being that the number can be repeated. If it is a person, person cannot be repeated. But that cannot be the case. We have to look at children. We have, let us say, the uh, 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 organization in which you want to give different awards annually for that people. And uh, you may pick based on that, may some criteria, merit and so on, you may pick that. The same person may get more than one award. That may be allowed. In which case, having given a decided person for award, the same person can be reconsidered. So that may be the case with replacement. Now let us take the very simple case that uh, there is uh, uh, N in the original set we want to draw K elements okay, with replacement. And let us first stick to the case that order has to be can be done, it is very easy to get, okay. The first item can be chosen in n possible ways and because we are replacing it, again there is a choice of n, again there is a choice of n up to k. So the number of ways is n power k. So this is what you will get for the case of with replacement, ordered sum. Now let us talk about a case Yeah. So you have positions where you want to 
bring up and fill it up. So to put in the first one, they have n choices. So there are n days in which the first position can be filled. And whatever you have picked, you cannot replace it. So therefore, for the next one, you have got n minus 1 choice. And next to next it is n minus 2 choices, and so on. For the kth one, you have got n minus of k minus 1 choice. Why it occurs is because, see, for the first one, it is n minus 0, all n are possible. Second, n minus 1. So for k, it is n minus of k minus 1, which is n minus k plus 1. So the number of ways for this is n minus 1 to n minus k plus 1. Okay, all these are relevant here, I know that, but still, let's go through all these. So, how do we write it in a much uh, uh, compact manner? For that, what we will do is, into n minus k, okay, because I have to subtract, for everything I have to subtract one more, we have been doing that, here I will subtract it to be uh, one will go, all you have to, I will put up to one and then repeat it here, so I will just multiply and divide this into one, two, and I know that this is nothing but n factorial and this is n minus k factorial. So we can write this as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. There are different, I will use this uh, notation, putting an apostrophe after that one for telling the factorial. There is also another way it is to do. So this is called as permutation. And it is usually represented like this. K permutation from a set of n integers. Which means that it is without sampling and it is an order. Not 
okay, you are not bothered about the order. Again, in the case that you pick some group of from here and tell that I need 10 volunteers to do some health thing. You just pick some 10 people and they all, they don't uh, sit in the stand in any order. They just, they are bunch of 10 people. They mix around in any manner, manner. So it is an unordered something. I don't care in which order they go and so on. So it is an unordered sampling uh, without replacement. Again, Again, now that you want to pick K. Second one, whatever I pick, I should not be used. So I have n minus one choices, and it goes like n minus one, k minus one, n minus k plus one. In which I would have got one a set. In a different manner, I would have got a set also. In that one, let us look at a set. In which I also got the same element. The elements are same. But they are in the different order. Okay. Now what I am telling is I am only looking at an unordered set where order is not important. So of both these, the original way of sampling with order gives me different possible ways out of which many ways I am not going to make any distinction. I am going to the other one of these. So these two I should not count separately. I should count it only. So all such sets which have the same property of this set, having the same elements, but only the arrangement is different. I will count only once. So what I have to do, I have to find first how many ways in which ordered sets can be arranged and then for, from there we have to divide it by the number of ways in which each set is represented just because of order. Okay. Now again what it is, you know how many ways a set can be ordered of k elements can be ordered. Because what we have seen for the end permutation, now there are k factorial ways in which they can be ordered. So that I have to divide it by the original power. So this we will call it as combination. So what I have to do is, I have this permutation initially, n k and I have to divide it by this k factor. So that is nothing but n factorial divided by n minus k factorial into k factorial. So this is called as the uh, n choose k or and this way of taking is called as the combination. To use this symbol for n choose. There are other ways in which also it can be used. So these are the basic ways in which uh, you can do the uh, different kinds of uh, sampling from a set of n, set of n. The other way, one thing which we have not discussed should also be with replacement and without ordering, you have to divide by k factor, n power k by k factor. So this is uh, the way it is. So incidentally, if you look at this, we have got a set of n. Out of which we are forming a set of k. Sampling without replacement, in which order is not important, we saw that n c k is the way of doing it. In the process of forming this set k, what I am doing is that I am creating without my knowledge another set of m minus k element. Okay. So this is a k set in which although there is no order, there is uh, all possible elements that 
which can be taken, K elements that can be taken from this end and arranged around all Actually, this means that whatever this let out will also form a distinct n minus k and all possible ways of picking n minus k elements without order are all present in the corresponding sense. So, the dual problem or other way is that if I have picked up n minus a formed a set of n minus k elements without replacement, without considering order, I would have got all this list which is the same as this one. That will also give me the same number of ways in which it could have been done. So, if that was the case, I would have computed n choose m minus k. And both we should have the same number of ways and you know that this is also equal to n factorial divided by n minus k. Um, okay. So, this is the same as that. Okay. So, this is where you divide splitting into two sets. This is how we can view it. Although your concentrations only to one get one set, basically it divides into two sets. How about splitting into a number of sets? So, inherently, these uh, NC case okay, are nothing but binomial coefficients. So, if you want to split, divide into a number of sets, and uh, the number of ways as you might generalize, it will give you the multinomial coefficient. Just look at that. So, we have got a set of N elements. You want to partition into a number of sets, subsets, such that this has got n1 element, n2 element, and n k elements, such that sigma i 1 to k n i equal to n. And what I am looking for is number of ways in which it can be ordered again without replacement. In the sense, the same element should not occur in any one of this having formed partition. The same element should not occur in the same set or in different set. And I don't care about the order. So this is what how we would like to get it. So how do we do it? First, let us look at a case of forming the number of ways that in which a subset of n1 elements can be drawn without replacement with an unordered manner from a set of n. Okay. So that we know that it is n choose n1. Okay. Having done that one, then I am now left with a problem of choosing the second set of n2 elements from n minus n1. Uh, reminding m and I can do it using m minus n1 choose n2 different and it goes on like that. Next I am left with n minus n1 minus n2 elements out of which I will choose n3 and it goes like that all the way to n minus n1 minus n k minus 1 choose from that I have to choose nk like this. And if you substitute the familiar formula, you will have n factorial divided by n minus n1 factorial into n1 factorial into n minus n1 factorial divided by n minus n1 minus n2 factorial into n2 factorial. And it goes like that. goes like that, here you will have. So, what we can do? We can strike off these two, we can strike off these two, 
and it goes like that, something will be here somewhere here the previous term which can be cancelled with this one. So what we have left out is n factorial divided by n1 factorial, n2 factorial and this is 0 factorial because n is equal to the sum of the other thing and you will have n3 factorial. And these are the multinomial coefficients that gives the uh, number of ways in which uh, we can partition a set into a different uh, subsets without replacement in an unordered way. Then if you want to look at certain examples, you can apply it and then have a look at certain examples. Let us say you have got 10 max books and then 8 physics books, 6 chemistry books and then you want to pick 3 from math and then 2 from physics and then 2 from chemistry and then arrange it in your shell. Uh, only thing is, uh, all the, the books belonging to the same subject to be one after another. All max books to be one after another, followed by physics, followed by physics. I am not telling max first and so I am just telling all books belonging to the same subject to be adjusted to each So this is how I, I would like to keep it. So how do we divide this problem? First thing is that what subject should come first? can be of different things. So first we have to arrange the subjects. There are three possible subjects. Subjects can be arranged in three factorial possible ways. Okay. And then you have to choose three from uh, ten in an unordered manner without sampling. So examples can be worked out. Now let us look at one more thing. That is hypergeometric problem. That is, let us say you have got a box. Okay, we use the word on. Maybe it's a old word, English word, but still classically we use it in proper Okay. This earn on uh, the box has got let us say n ball. Out of which m are rending color. And therefore and remaining are not red, but they are, they are black only. So n minus m are black in color. So we are interested in sampling, okay, uh, without replacement, then incidentally they are all identical ones, that is what we generally do. So here again the order does not matter, once we draw all, we have got all red balls and what is the order here. So it is an identical one. That is one way of telling or without ordering. Okay. Without replacement is what we have to identify. So what we are interested in, we are wanting to want to pick K balls and we are interested in finding the property that I balls are red. K <coughs> so out of N, M of them are red, N minus M of them 
are black. Okay. So we are interested in we are going to pick K balls out of which we are looking for I balls which are red in color. First, we have to make sure that I balls are red in color when K are picked. First of all, I has to be less than or equal to K. Because totally we are only picking K balls. We can't expect more red balls in that one. So I has to be less than or equal to K. One more inequality that we may have to force is any other inequality? K less than equal to K less than equal to obvious. Because it is without ah, I less than or equal to Because there are only M red balls. I am asking uh, uh, for the probability that I of uh, whatever that is picked is red. If I am having first of all less number of red balls, I can't even pick so many. Any other? Any other? M less than M. Huh? M less than M. M less than M. No, come on, they are all given. The <laughs> box is closed and all. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing is that, okay, see, if what happens if all of them are red? It's a suggest, okay, I can, I see there are some 20 balls in this one, 20 balls, all of them are red. I am just asking, I want to pick only 10 balls. Out of which I am asking, 5 are red. Why will be red? is less than 20, 10, I can always pick from 20, that's also okay. But only, I am telling that 5, only 5 has to be red, which means that 5 has to be black. Of course, there should have enough black balls for that to happen. Otherwise, it cannot happen. So, what is the corresponding condition? K minus I less than or equal to N minus 5. So, this is uh, prerequisite we put for whatever solution that we are going to arrange. So we will not bother about this as being satisfied. Then now the number of ways that this can happen is easy to find it out. I have to choose I red okay, and K minus I black and there are M and there are N minus so, the total number of ways in which, okay, the number of ways, probability also we can find. The number of ways in which it can be done is M choose I. In which I of them I am choosing it from M without replacement. So, M factorial divided by M minus I factorial will come, I factorial will come, unordered, everything will get that. In, in, in addition to that, I have to make sure that the remaining are black, then only exactly I will be there. So this alone is not enough. So the remaining n minus m choose a minus one. And if you want to say that instead of asking the number of it, probability that i are black, i are red, is that is this will be number of ways in which the event that you are looking for will occur divided by the total number of ways in which the picking can be done, sampling can be done. That is n k n q k. So this is how we compute the different probabilities, different cases, different probabilities. How much more time? Sir, so. Oh. Okay. Fine. Um, Okay, so yeah, yeah. Um, we have a couple of minutes or so, that's it. So, quickly I will tell you, to make it very clear, okay, we have got four uh, characters out of which you want to choose two. 
how a different combination will look like. Suppose I want to draw two characters out of four in, in which in a without replacement and which um, uh, in an unordered way, then I would get AB, okay, and then AC, AD, and then BC, BD, and then CD. Right? This is how I would have chosen. Uh, without replacement, two words out of from this one, okay, uh, in an unordered way. Because look, uh, yeah, AB is represented only once. So there are six things. If it were an ordered one, AB and BE are distinct. So then how would I would have done? AB, AC, AB. I would have again considered BA. BB I will not choose because no replacement. BC, BD, CA, CB, and then CD, and then DA, DB, DC, which is 4 into 3, that is equal to 12. Okay? And supposing I allow uh, replacement, I would end up getting 4 more. Which is 4, 4 plus 12 is equal to 16. So this is matches with our formula that n power k, see n is equal to uh, 4 and k is equal to 2. So n power 4, 4 power 2 that is equal to 16. That is with replacement and then with order means 16. And uh, what is it? And n choose k is 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial, okay, uh, how much is 12 and permutation n, uh, no, this is 6, n k is 12 by side 2 factorial, 2 factorial and this is 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial uh, is 12, right? Fine. Right. So this is a simple example which shows how this uh, uh, ordering actually means when we say different ways of sampling. We'll stop at this point.